Good morning, everybody. This is Unmesh Mehta. I am the co-founder of Source Pro. Welcome to the introductory presentation, come demonstration of our new ERP solution, New Horizon. I thank everyone for sparing time to uh, join this webinar. Before we get into the details of the product, a brief highlight about the organization. We are a two decade old company in ERP space. Our product IMMS has its roots in uh, early 2000. We have a customer, a German multinational company who was our first customer number one, who has been using our product continuously for about two decades. And some of our customers, the average age is about 11 years. So our engagement with the client organizations is over a long period of time. The largest customer that we have has about 200,000 unique items in their part master. Uh, on an average, uh, they have about 5,000 items in their bill of material. By now, we have more than 150 manufacturing companies who have been using our ERP for a long period of time. And the largest customer that we have is doing about 500 plus crore of turnover. So this is the history of uh, the product, the organization. Uh, before we go further, I would uh, request everybody to keep your questions ready. At the end of the session, I'll invite uh, questions and uh, we'll, we'll provide you the answers. Right now, all attendees are in uh, listen only mode. New Horizon is the state-of-the-art ERP solution which has more than two decades of experience built into it. It's an end-to-end -end ERP solution. The uniqueness of this product is its accessibility. It uses this state-of-the-art technology. This product, New Horizon, is device agnostic. It is operating system agnostic. What does it mean to the customer? You could use it from any mobile phone, whether it is Android or iOS. You can use it from any tab. Again, it could be an Android tab or iPad, or it could be used on any standard laptop or desktop running uh, any standard operating system like Windows, uh, Linux, or Mac. So accessibility of this product is all pervasive. Wherever you have the access to internet, you will be able to use the product. It is ready for cloud implementation. We already have a few customers who have started using it on the cloud. It's a fully secure ERP solution. From the functionality perspective, the security is implemented role-based. So you can create roles in the organization. This is a definition that user provides. So you create roles within the organization and with each role you connect the user so essentially the user who has been connected to the role will get the access to the functionalities which are given to that role over and above this a user is also connected to the company and the site to which he has the rights so access to the product is fully governed by the erp administrator through the security mechanism we can also enforce password policies, which I will show you in detail when we go to the product. Another killer feature of our ERP is its capability, multilingual capability to hot switch between, between user interfaces. And this language could be vernacular language or a foreign language. Just to illustrate, I will show you an example that I am now switching the interface to Hindi. So even in use, you can hot switch between interfaces in different languages. If I want to look at the screen in Tamil, I can do that. So it could be any vernacular language or it could be any international language in which a screen interface can be seen. Then we also have a functionality where users can build their own menus. So uh, depending upon the level at which the user is operating in the system, he or she can decide which are 
very important menu items for him or her. Based on that, the menu will appear as soon as the user logs in. This gives a tremendous time saving in terms of navigation through the system. Because of its pervasiveness, you can use New Horizon from any location in a very secure manner. So uh, because of the device agnostic product, because it being a OS agnostic product, location independent access to the system is possible. We keep a complete audit trail of all the transactions and masters which are recorded in the system. We also keep track of the user's login data. Every record that is created in the system carries the date timestamp as well as the user stamp. A new record is created or an existing record is altered. The complete audit trail is maintained in the system. As you would see as we go along, a lot of features and functionalities in the product are such that you would not find them usually in this class of product that we are working with. I will now take you through the finer aspects of the product. One of the most powerful features of our new, new horizon is its MRP engine called AutoShop. Now, material requirement planning is a subject by itself, which we have weaved into this product very comprehensively. Plainly put, a material requirement planning engine matches the demand and supply equation. The demand of material in the organization can come from multiple sources. You could be in different kinds of manufacturing setups. You could be in made to order or made to stock kind of a setup. You could be in assembled to order or made to design kind of a setup. Depending upon the product mix that you have and the manufacturing methodology that you have, the demand would be created by the customer orders or forecast orders, which can also be called the stock orders. This would create the demand of material within the organization. In any kind of manufacturing, there are many items or materials which are kept in inventory on a minimum inventory level and this is also creating a demand of material in the company and then there is always a possibility of a priority getting shifted because of which reshuffle of material from job to job is necessitated so these are some of the illustrations of how demand is created for material requirement planning now material requirement planning is to know three important aspects which are what is required, in how much quantity is it required, and very importantly, when is it required. AutoShop handles all these three very efficiently, and I'll explain how it is doing this. As soon as the demand is created in the system, AutoShop takes into cognizance the requirement of material. The planning engine works on the principle of allocation. So material is allocated from stock to a job so that it is reserved for the job. The remaining material is then deemed to be the shortage. But AutoShop does not stop there. It looks into the pipeline of material which is still not received in the warehouse. Now, what are the possible stages for this? The possible stages are that material would have come into QC, but not cleared. Material would have been received in stores, but not authorized uh, through the GRN. Material may still be in the pending order situation, not delivered to you. Or there could be purchase indents in the company which, are yet, which have yet not been converted into purchase orders. So this is your entire material pipeline. AutoShop also goes and looks for free material available in this pipeline. And I use the word free. It is with a purpose because we also allocate material in the pipeline to the job. 
so what is not allocated to jobs in the pipeline is deemed to be the free material which is allocated to the now created demand and after that netting of the shortage uh, the availability of material shortages are calculated for which auto shop takes action what does it do there are two types of materials in the manufacturing setup things that you buy things that you manufacture material that you buy and not available are taken into purchase indents so indent is created with the material in shortage along with the linkages to the job from which the requirement has come up requirement could have come from the manufacturing order or requirement could have come from customer order for those items which you are in uh, business of trading so indents are created for gross quantities with a break up of the link of the document from which the requirement has come along with the quantity required in each of this document further it also creates a delivery schedule based on the lead times that you would have provided for procurement of the material and the manufacturing lead times that you would have provided in your standard process sheets indents carry the delivery schedules as well so procurement is secured for quantities and time and obviously the items and indents are generated by auto shop for manufactured items in shortage work orders are created work orders are document given to the shop floor for manufacturing so work orders are also created by the system and the third thing that auto shop creates is labor indents in situations where there are subcontracted operations where material has to go out of the shop floor for intermediate operations labor indents are also created by the system so when auto shop run is complete your entire material planning is done by the system we have also provided controls in new horizon with which you can actually restrict the creation of manual indents for items which are being planned by auto shop which are your bill of material kind of items or your product and spare kind of items so you can leave the entire material planning to auto shop this is the power of uh, the mrp we have business cases where customers have benefited with the use of completely automated planning in case of a customer who is doing business worth about 500 crores uh, they manage with an inventory on an average of about 35 crores which means that they do more than 12 13 turns of the inventory and this manufacturer is a large manufacturer so you can imagine the kind of saving that people make just by efficiently managing their inventory and leaving the decision making to the system based on the rules that you have defined in the system so auto shop is one of the most powerful features that we have in the system apart from others we also have a mobile app which is meant for management so we provide management dashboards these dashboards are available on both kinds of mobile devices whether android or iphone and the health of the organization can be seen on the mobile wherever you are on real time basis we also have built in sales analytics which can give you information in graphical form on your pipelines on your actual performance in terms of products sold in quantity and value in terms of performances by individual people in the sales team and we do tracking as well so you can actually get to know the status of every lead that you have in the system so crm is complete right from lead generation to order booking and and again you can have text based reports or you could have graphical reports for this we have a unique feature in the system called gross contribution so here you can get the gross contribution on every sale transaction that you have done 
we work on a concept called cogs cost of goods sold so every time an invoice is raised its cogs value is determined by the system and you can get to see the percentage wise profit on every sale here we have a unique functionality where you can set up the system at the time of implementation and automate the process of creating of profit center with every customer order that you book necessarily this will help you in capturing all the pre sales and post sales cost of that order so your total cost is going to be your cost of goods sold plus your pre and post sales expenses everything is factored in and you can look at uh, the percentage wise profit and absolute value profit for every customer order and for every invoice that you have made for the customer we also provide real time data on inventory valuation in different phases the one that you are looking at right now is wip inventory valuation so you get to see the wip value of material lying on the shop floor on real time basis so as you can see you have all the child items with the jobs for which it has been issued to the shop floor with work order number child quantity and child value so what you get to see here is your total inventory value on the shop floor that is your wip value this you can have this is one of the okay inventory valuation will be determined by your first in first out kind of uh, inventory valuation methodology or it could be moving average or it could be that actual as you have determined so the value that you get to see at the end of the report is the total inventory value on the top floor similarly you could have the predictive costing also now this predictive costing is possible just after you have created the bill of material so based on the bill of material you can get to know what is your likely cost of bill of material you can have it by last year end rate you can have it by last purchase order rate or you can have it by standard rate so these are some of the impacts of system on the availability of information what we also have in new horizon is capturing of knowledge usually manufacturing knowledge is carried in the head of people who work there we have a methodology through which we capture this knowledge there are several tools through which we do that in the system you define your product structure your master bill of material in the system you define the processes that you have to do to convert your raw material into a finished product you also define the sequence of operations you also define the work centers on which these operations have to be done so entire manufacturing knowledge is captured in the system so from that point onwards all your products and processes related data will be a part of the system so your organization will become more system driven than people driven so manufacturing resources are your work centers you would have manufacturing shops under which there would be work centers that is also captured here a uh, manufacturing setup or manufacturing work centers could be of machine type or could be of labor type so all this data is captured in the system optimal utilization of production resources so here you could get to see how your shop floor is loaded at this point in time which will help you to know whether you have manufacturing capacity available or you are running out of capacity so this is the summary data where you get to see day by day what are your uh, work centers and whether any capacity is available there so this helps you to plan your production based on available capacity or you could also 
take decisions like make or buy you could also get this data granularly for the work center wise loading through the work orders that you have issued to the shop floor and how much time is going to be booked or required for each of these work order is also shown to you so manufacturing planning on the shop floor can also be handled through the system similarly on the financial accounting side new horizon is completely integrated with finance which i'll explain to you when we uh, go into the details of the product financial accounting system integration starts with the creation of a vendor or a customer in the system or definition of a material in the system and goes all the way up to creating automatic transactions of inventory movement in your company and posting its value directly in the books of account this is one of the most thorough integrated financial accounting systems ever seen in any erp product how detailed it is can be gauged by the fact that for every issue slip that you make value of the issue slip is posted in the books of account for every delivery note that you make the value of delivery note is posted in the books of account it's a complete financial accounting system module which obviously has two components one component is called auto post accounts data for which is brought from other parts of erp into the books and the other is your regular cash bank journal voucher kind of transactions which can be entered into the system based on which you can get this receivable and payable analysis just to give you an idea of the kind of uh, customer base that we have as you can see we have a large number of multinational companies as our customers people who have been using our products for various lengths of time in different kinds of manufacturing setups we are very firmly established in capital capital goods machinery manufacturing and generally speaking discrete kind of manufacturing business as opposed to the process kind of manufacturing business in this product we compare better than our nearest competition in the field which is from sap b1 uh, we have uh, first of all conceptual level difference between products like sap b1 or microsoft navision which is that those products have originated from finance orientation whereas in our case the orientation is manufacturing so the strength of our product lies here that we cover manufacturing in very great detail another thing is that we are very domain specific erp solution as i said we offer this to discrete manufacturing companies largely capital goods equipment machinery manufacturing companies whereas a product like sap b1 is more generic in nature and is offered across spectrum so naturally they will not be able to compete against us when we come to our domain because the manufacturing depth that we have is unsurpassed we go into every small detail of manufacturing which extends even to the subcontractor as well we have built multiple manufacturing methodology methodologies in our product so you you could have a made to stock operation you could have a made to design operation or you could have a made to order operation they are all supported and there are functionalities available with which you will be able to handle the business of any of this type in the system we support multiple verticals within discrete manufacturing just to give you an illustration and we are the only company with an erp product that has a unique functionality for those who are in fabrication we provide inventory tracking by the size of the material to elaborate this further if somebody is in the business of fabrication and uses sheets or 
plates you would be able to track the material by the size and the number of pieces that he has in inventory which results in great saving of inventory because optimal sizes for taking up for manufacturing would be seen in the system not just the weight this i'll again describe when we are into the product we are with new horizon we have a technology which is not available in sap b1 today we have uh, now a cloud access available so users can choose between deploying it on their own premises or putting it on the cloud our licenses are floating licenses across multiple companies and across multiple sites we offer concurrent license so it is not a named user license so there is a great saving in commercial terms and we have only one kind of license which is full license so once you give a license the user has the freedom to decide how many modules how many functions what all does he want to do in that license if we look at the comparison at the modular level uh, those who know uh, sap b1 would be uh, knowing that there are certain modules which are not available in sap b1 because it was never meant to be a product to be sold to manufacturing companies so we have uh, things like subcontracting and qc which are sold as add-ons in sap b1 by design we have brought them into our product we believe that manufacturing core is engineering planning production purchase stores qc and subcontracting so the amount of work that we have done in this product is unsurpassed we are one of those rare companies in erp space who have done integration with cad products like autocad inventor where there is a bidirectional link established so things that you are doing in autocad you design your bill of your product in autocad and its bill of material will automatically flow into uh, new horizon and similarly the inventory that you carry in new horizon will be shown to the designer when he is in autocad similarly we have done integration with a plm tool called winchel which is from ptc it's a 360 degree integration so inquiries are entered into erp which flow into plm for estimation estimations come back into erp for offer once the order is finalized it is entered into erp and order details are carried into plm and the detailed engineering and bill of material are created in plm and brought into the erp any change of bill of material at the design level is done in plm and brought into erp so it's a complete 360 degree integration we also have now integration with tally so for those companies who would want to continue using tally as their principal accounting system there is an integration done between new horizon and tally so these are the unique features that we have in new horizon to summarize we believe that new horizon is a must have tool for those who want to optimize inventory resulting definitely into lower working capital requirement hence reduction in cost and it's a very user friendly kind of erp very easy to use there is only one version of fact in the system so your organization needs to enter the data at the point of origin it becomes available to whosoever wants it wherever he wants it so any data going into the system has to be entered once only and finally we are very price efficient the value for money that we offer is very very friendly to the customers we believe that uh, we have got a product that uh, would be found highly acceptable to all our potential customers now this is the end of my presentation which was slide show now we are getting into the product which is new horizon this is 
the login screen of New Horizon. As I explained to you in the slideshow, New Horizon has two levels at which the access is defined. One is the role-based security and the other is user. Here I am logging in with my password. The, the minute I am recognized as a user, system will bring to me the companies in which I have the rights of access and the sites in which I have the rights of access. So I have to select in which company and in which site do I want to work right now. This is the home screen of the product. I'll explain the functionalities one by one. For the entire product, we have done a very detailed documentation and online help is available directly in the system. So right from the product itself, you can launch the help. So a user can read through on the functionalities. And we have also provided a very good example. And through entire documentation, we have used the illustration of a bicycle, an equipment or machine that everybody is familiar with. And all, all illustrations relate to or link to this bicycle illustration. So we have a very detailed documentation done, which is screen by screen. Here you would see that you have, again, the same example with part code, etc and the details are provided. And wherever there is a hot link, like reference is made to user management, it jumps to the user management site and gives you how users are defined. And then you have all the detailed documentation. Coming back to the product, the second important thing is this, notifications. System has notifications which are generated at the defined events and send to those who have been put into that receiving metrics. Notifications are generated and shown on the screen if the user is logged in. If he is not logged in, they are kept in the mailbox. When the user logs in, the notifications are shown. Here there is another view of the notification. This indicates that I have yet not read, I have not yet read the uh, notification. When I am done, all that I do is click on this icon, which will tell the system that I have read it. And this trash will help me to remove this from my view so that next time I will not show, I will not uh, see this. And I would, it would still be there in the system, but it would go away from my view. Then here I have a functionality of setting up my favorite menu. Suppose I have to do uh, a indent print every day. And what I do is I go to indent print. And then I add to favorite. I may call it indent. I have a way of defining my own menu name also. So it has been added to my favorites. So next time when I log in, indent print will be shown to me in my favorites. Here we have very extensive search. Like if I want to search through any item, let's say I have, a, as all of you know, Item Master is the largest database in any ERP, in a manufacturing ERP. Suppose I want to know how many items do I have in my Item Master, which have descriptions where I have used a word called pipe or tube or bar. And I want to search through description. So it brings out all those items where either pipe or tube or bar is written in the description. 
See here, the bar is written here, pipe is written and so on. Another important feature is wherever there is a grid for user convenience, we allow this, we have this drag and drop. So you can change the columns, the sequence of columns if required. So these are some of the features here. I have my own profile where I can keep my picture and then I can also define my email body text and my signature. And here, as you can see, Microsoft Word like features have been provided to define your email body. So when you generate an email out of the system, suppose you are in the job function where you have to send out the purchase orders to your vendors. You would define your email body text, which is in context to that. And then you can obviously have your own signature which will be appended at the bottom and you can put your picture which will be shown to you when you log in so this is my profile that i can create now getting into the product the first and foremost thing that we have is setting up of the policies as you can see the product is modular so what you get to see here at the top are the modules for every module, the organization which is implementing New Horizon can set up the policies. Now policies are rules that you want the organization to follow. I am just illustrating or showing you one, which is purchase policy. The first question is, should PO remain open after rejection is made? You can decide whether you would want to accept the fresh material against existing PO or you would want the new purchase order to be made if the total quantity was received. Then control related questions such as allow changing purchase rate in purchase order and PO amendment entry. We have a ironclad mechanism to define purchase rates in the system where the relationship with the vendor for, a, for an item is defined with its rates and taxes and discounts. You can tell the system that once I have created that relationship and locked it, purchaser should not be allowed to change the rate or purchaser should not be allowed to change the discount. Similarly, on this side, there are issues related to indent. Indents, as I explained to you in the presentation, are created by AutoShop. Now, once that is done, do you want the purchaser to change the PO quantity that is have a greater PO quantity than what is given in the indent. By setting up this flag, you can control the quantities coming into the company. You may say that I do not want the purchaser to have additional quantities. I just want him to convert an existing indent quantity into purchase order quantity. Similarly, delivery schedules are also brought into the indent from auto shop. As I explained to you, when to buy is equally important. So do you want the purchaser to change the delivery schedule? Because if you allow a delivery to come early, necessarily you will carry a higher inventory carrying cost. So these are policy related decisions that you will take when you implement. On this side, allow PO authorization without SEO link. If you are in a business where you do job based procurement, so material that you come that you buy comes into the company for a specific job so do you want PO authorization to be done even if the SEO link is not provided this is possible only in cases where indents and purchase indents were not created in auto shop otherwise auto shop would have put an SEO link there so these are some of the questions that you would answer at the time of implementation so that your company would work exactly according to the rules set there. Similarly, there is MRP policy, there is shop policy. I'll now uh, browse through the finance policy. As I told you, we have a complete integration between ERP modules related to manufacturing, finance there are accounts which you your the customer may or may not have in the chart of accounts which are required in new horizon for auto posting of financial transactions 
so for every such transaction that takes place in erp there is an auto post account which will be mapped so there are accounts here as you can see which will impact the pnl side here you can see variety of account types like scrap account so when material moves into scrap godown this account will be updated by or rejection similarly there are accounts on the liability asset and income side on liability side whenever there is a material received in the store a grn liability is created so where would it be posted this is my control account for that then there are asset type of auto post accounts like rejection is your inventory so it stays in your inventory so it's an asset type of account then wip when material is issued from store to the shop wip account is posted automatically so these are some of the setup that you have to do when you implement new horizon and then there are other control functionalities like allow negative balance in cash transaction and allow changing taxes while doing bill passing do you want to maintain location wise check numbers do you allow to payment of debtors by rtgs or neft create first level profit center for each sales who have at the time of sales who have authorization this is what i mentioned in my presentation that you can create ask system to create first level profit center automatically whenever an order acknowledgement form is authorized it will the system new horizon will capture all the costs and all the incomes booked under that where and show you the profitability for every order that you have booked so system controls or policies are the first thing that you do when you start using or implementing new horizon coming to the other side you create roles in the system like a role has been created here that of an account manager now what is it that account manager role will be allowed to do in the system is defined here so these are the functionalities and check boxes which are shown here indicates that these functions should be allowed in the role called account manager so roles are created depending upon the requirement of the organization the second part is to create users so you have a user management functionality users are created with the login name and password etc you can set up the expiry date of the password and then attach it to a role and also attach it to the company and the site to which this user will have the access so a user gets connected with three things the role in which he has to work the companies to which he will have the access and the sites of these companies to which he will have access so these are some of the basic setups that you do when you start implementing new horizon then we come to a very important master which is the class and subclass master as you know item masters in manufacturing companies are really large running into tens of thousands of items in some cases many more than that so it is essential that these items are properly grouped for mis purposes as well as in case of new horizon for its linkage to the financial accounting system a class and subclasses within a class are definitions created by users so you have a class and its description for every class there are certain parameters or dimensions that you would define one is inventory valuation method that you will follow in this class so we support three you could have fifo or a moving average or at actual valuation for this class nature of item is defined in the system so you can connect a nature of item with a class nature of item also governs the behavior of certain functions then 
for material tracking we have several parameters through which we do that if you are in a business where incoming material carry serial numbers which you may track because you may be getting back to back warranty on the items you can do the serial number tracking similarly you can create manufacturing batches for your finished products you can have inward batch created for material that is coming in so if it is one each in number it is usually serial number if it is a lot it is batch heat number is a specific control mechanism for those companies who buy material from steel mills or foundries steel mills or foundries provide heat numbers shelf life shelf life is for those items which carry expiry date or useful in many cases where uh, material has to be used before expiry date in this class whether qc is required to be done when material comes in so there is a uh, there is a module for this a qc module and then whether indents are required to be ma made for this class of items and whether these items are required for job based mrp you can also define percentage of excess quantity at the time of gr and against p order quantity for this class which means that if there is an order for 10 tons and if material received is 10.5 tons should gr and be allowed to be made so you can say that up to 5% excess i'll allow so grn can be made for 5% quantity more than the order quantity we also do fast flow non moving analysis so the parameters can be defined here and now we come to this linkage inventory link to accounts so for this group code which is a uh, account master group code and for this account this class whenever there is a movement of material in this class this account will get posted so this establishes the link between a very critical link between manufacturing part of erp and financial accounting and for every group you can define the buyer and the planner so class definition is very important and similarly you can create multiple sub classes under a class so this is again your own definition where you would define classes and sub classes you can also define document controls so document control you for every transaction in uh, new horizon there is a matching document created so as you can see on the left hand side the tree shows the type of transactions that we have in the system so uh, for you to decide how many document types would you want to create i i would take the example of material purchase for illustration so in material purchase i would say that uh, i would require authorization i may require multiple authorization also so multiple authorization is more than one people have to authorize the document for it to become valid and i could do it by value also and i could do it by levels also whether auto number generation is required for that document and whether you want to make site specific number generation so when we set up the system this is very important for us to configure so for every transaction in the system there is a document control setting done now as you can see there are multiple policy types of policies and masters but i have shown you things which are uh, important to be highlighted now we move to the cycle the the manufacturing cycle side i will start off with the item master item master is the most important master in a manufacturing setup what you are seeing on your screen here is the item master definition which has two panels one is item definition where you define the item code give the description to the item you can also have a detailed description any additional description that you may have what you see here my cursor is pointing to this picture of a computer you can attach the photograph or image of the item for easy identification this information linkage to the class is done here at the item master level so your class and subclass get associated with the item in the item master 
material of construction shortly in abbreviation it is called moc you if this is a item that has a material of construction you can define that as well typical examples would be whether a part is made up of mild steel whether it's a carbon steel whether it's brass or what have you or a rubber or plastic and then nature of item we have fixed nature of items your product and your spare item types are manufactured items or uh, bought out items within each we have manufactured component and manufactured assembly or bought out component and bought out assembly this is very important unit of measurement unit of measurement as you know multiple units of measurement are available in new horizon this one is called internal unit of measurement in which bill of material quantities are defined and in which inventory quantities are shown so basic unit of measurement is your internal unit of measurement here inherited properties from class will be shown to you like whether this item requires serial number whether qc is required so whatever is applicable you would select now this is important dimension wise stock keeping required i mentioned about functionalities related to fabrication here you would be able to connect between the fabrication requirements and the item master if the items that you are using have dimensions such as length and diameter or length and breadth and thickness they can all be defined here so if i would say dimension wise stock keeping required it will ask me the sizes of what is the standard size of this item so if i say i am buying 3 mm sheet from the market the standard size that i get is uh, let's say 5000 mm by 2500 mm then i can define those standard sizes here by dimension then this is an important flag where you would say whether work orders are required to be created work orders are documents and data capture points which help you to track your inventory by the part code and also capture cost of that part if it is manufactured so in a bill of material a hierarchical bill of material you would have multiple places where you can decide whether you want to create a work order for that item so this is a flag to support that we also have kanban functionality in new horizon kanban is a manufacturing methodology or philosophy where for certain c class items you have warehouses on the shop floor and material can be picked as required need not be issued and at the end of the manufacturing cycle when work order is closed the bill of material quantity defined would automatically be removed from the inventory so kanban functionality is supported in new horizon we also have a functionality where you either work in a very controlled environment and material is allowed to be issued according to the bill of material quantity or you also have the option of giving additional material against the uh, work orders the value of which can get added to the cost of manufactured item so these are some of the salient features of the item master you can also attach your files with the item master if required so these are some of the things that you would put in the item master moving forward the next important part is defining the master bill of material or product structure as we call it in new horizon so i would take an example of a computer which every all of us understand so this is my standard product structure for making a computer now what have I, what do i have here i have an item called computer hp what all do i put in it there has to be a cabinet so this is the cabinet for which there is a bill of material where i require a front cover and back cover so front cover how is it made it is made out of 5 mm plate 
and back cover again made out of 5 mm plate keyboard is a bought out item from me so i do not have any data related to manufacture hard disk i have options either i can have a uh, 2 terabyte hard disk or a 1 terabyte hard disk so i can decide which kind of hard disk do i want to put in and mouse is an optional item for me so the relationship type are all defined here as mandatory feature or optional type of items so what you get to see here is m which is mandatory so these items will be automatically picked up when you make a customer bill of material here you would have the option to take the feature one of the features or one of the options feature has to be there of which one option is mandatory and this is purely optional i may use it in my final bill of material i may not use it so product structures have to be created which are your master bill of material and they have to be frozen and from that you can create a customer bill of material so customer bill of material can be created from two sources one is that i may have a customer order or the other is that i could have a stock order so if i have a customer order i could pick up from the customer order and make a bill of material for that or i could take a stock order and make a bill of material from stock order so customer bill of material i would uh, let's say take some sales of order so here again i have created a customer bill of material which is meant for a specific order now which is that order this item is going to be made for ankur corporation this is his purchase order number and one quantity has to be made this is the order acknowledgement form so now i have the customer bill of material i can pick and choose between options in a feature and optional items and once customer bill of material is made actual planning and production cycle will start two important things that i would like to touch upon here is we have a controlled mechanism of changing the bill of material so any change required to be done to a frozen product structure has to be done through a note called engineering change note where you can where you can decide which change is required to be done if i show you a fresh one to be made it will ask you what do you want to do i i would say uh, i want to create another engineering change so under which parent do i want to change that so i would say uh, i want to make a change in this parent called empty body what do i want to do add child items delete child items replace items or create a revision so for every change that i want to do in my master product structure i have a control after which only a change will be brought into effect one cannot simply go and edit the master bill of material similarly if i want to make a change to existing customer bill of material i have to create a customer change note now customer change note again would have this add item delete item replace change quantity and change remark quickly elaborating this further a customer change note is a document which has very wide impact on the actual functioning of the mrp cycle if i am adding new item obviously it has to be planned for so if something new is coming into my bill of material i have to buy or manufacture that item but if i am removing something or if i am reducing quantity of some item it can have effect on the entire chain of planning and production and procurement what all can happen i have done a customer change note for which bill of material is just made no planning has been done then it is easy i just go and change the bill of material but if planning had already started then there is a possibility that material allocation would have been done an item is now removed from the bill of material 
automatic deallocation is done by customer chain note at the time of authorization if this item was in the pipeline the link that i mentioned with the sales job order or the customer order would be removed for this item the quantity that you are reducing or the item that you are removing the change in mrp position if the item was issued to the shop floor then a return note is created by the system and only after stores is authorizing that return note this ccn will be allowed to be applied if material was sent out to a subcontractor system will give a report that this gate pass is are open against this job please bring this material back and give it to store only then the bill of material change can be effected so ccn is a document that gives a total control over your material procurement planning and production cycle so bill of material change is not taken lightly in new horizon because it can save your in precious inventory cost so this is as far as important masters are concerned on the manufacturing side now we get into crm the major master here in crm is customer master so every detail of a customer is captured here the, this related the information related to uh, the location the statutory requirements such as gst and other statutory numbers like permanent account number and all all the contact details because you know we also send out mails directly from and sms messages also from the system so these details are captured uh, you can have your own definition of sales region you can define credit limits and two important controls that we have here is for this customer after this credit limit is exhausted do you want the sales order to be booked with a warning or do you want to stop booking of the order if the order credit limit is violated similarly at the time of making of the sales invoice if the credit limit is violated crossed do you want just a warning or you want to stop making of the invoice so when customer is created and along with that the account is created in the chart of accounts for that customer now here we have something which is very helpful to people who use integrated finance in our system as you know customers are a part of sundry daters and uh, many a times you receive advance from the customer which in normal cases people would want to book against sundry daters only which shows them an incorrect picture of outstanding so we have a functionality with which you would be able to create a customer account on the liability side as well so advance received would go to that account and sundry daters would be used only for posting of invoices and money received against invoices again the interconnect and integration is that when you are actually booking the invoice of the customer system shows you that this money is lying in advance and you can transfer it through a jv into the data account similarly you may have retention type of situation so you can create a retention account also on your current asset side so money that is not going to be due to you for a certain length of time can be transferred into retention account so typically a customer account could have one on the liability side and two on the current asset side so once a customer master is created you have other important i'll touch upon another important master here which is called sales item so sales item master is the definition of item from the sales side the one that we saw earlier was from the internal or manufacturing side here you can give a separate sales item code for that item it's a separate sales unit of measurement link it to the internal item define the prices here and the, uh, the prices in multiple currencies can also be defined so you have the currency code and you define the prices there so sales items are created and the price lists are generated for items that you are selling which could be a product type of item or in uh, some cases tariff kind of item and then for your regular customers you can have a relationship established between the sales item and the customer so you have item customer master where you connect a customer to the items that he is regularly buying 
and you can create customer specific price lists price lists here once the customer gives you the inquiry it goes into the lead now a lead entry is done either you have the existing leads in the system or you create a fresh lead so if you are creating a fresh lead you have the details here like customer which of our salesperson is going to handle this we also support project kind of business so whether this is a non project lead or a project lead you get the lead details uh, each lead has a unique serial number generated for it source of lead is what you would define this is your definition of how this lead was received you also have tender situations so you enter tender related details we capture follow up so for this lead how much follow up has been done is also shown to you items for which the lead has been received is also shown to you and you can have the file attachments with the lead so a lead goes into the system uh, i would open uh, one of the entered leads so this data is then captured in the system lead is the starting point next is offer so when you go to offer it could be either based on leads that you have entered or it could be a fresh entry of quotation directly without the lead so if i say add new that is i want to create new quotation system will prompt me whether it is based on inquiry that is lead or without inquiry if it is based on inquiry system will fetch the data directly from there and only missing information has to be shown another feature of new horizon is that you can filter the list view i have just filtered filter date for pending authorization so i am shown only those records where i have yet not done the authorization if i want to see only authorized transactions i would be able to see that so quotations are generated in the system based either on the leads or entered directly so offer is a document that can be made and printed from the system all the relevant information about the items the taxes which will be applicable and possible order value if this comes to you are all shown here in your currency as well as in customer currency if it is an export kind of a transaction and all the taxes which are applicable and rates and terms that are applicable here so these are some of the things that go into making of an offer if the offer is there in the system or even if the offer is not there in the system you enter the sales order so you have the sales order receipt i'll open one of the existing ones same options you get if you have the offer it will fetch data from the offer if you have a direct sales order coming to you you can directly enter the sales order in the system you don't have to actually prepare the offer to do this by the yeah so this is with without quotation reference and the data here is that of a customer called ankur corporation who is in amdabad in an area called watwa and these are the details about his order number because he would have given the order to you so he would have given the order number we also support agency association so uh, you can attach agents and their commission structures for the items that are sold through him and the calculation of this commission is also done in the system so agency based business is also supported important thing here is a customer could have order from bill to and ship to different addresses we support that a customer could have multiple different shipment addresses and we also take into account the gst related requirements if the shipment addresses are different than their billing addresses so this is how the order is booked and on the lead follow up side we have follow ups done for variety of things so you can do the follow up for the inquiry that is entered into the system you could also do the follow up for orders you could also do the follow up for quotations so every follow up is captured here so you get to see whether it was an inquiry follow up quotation follow up order follow up invoice follow up or any other kind of follow up 
not only we capture the details of the current follow up we also capture the details of when do you plan to do the next follow up so next follow up is also shown here so all these are captured so once a customer order is in place the next step is to prepare an order acknowledgement form so you have order acknowledgement form order acknowledgement form is a confirmation of the customer order once customer order is confirmed then it is taken up for planning so from here this, this is order confirmation form from here we will get into autoshop autoshop is our planning engine as i told you so you get into planning situation for planning you have two routes one is existing material if it is already available you can set up the sequence in which you would want to plan for material so you set up oaf sequence all the orders that you have received so this is the sequence of orders which is by its natural chronology you can change the sequence if you want and in autoshop you would have uh, i would show you now the autoshop screen where you would have data coming in from customer orders for traded items and sales of orders for manufactured items which have come from the customer bill of material here you have three options sales of order order acknowledgement form and mil these are the three things for which you could run your planning engine so this is your seo requirement this is your oaf which have been brought into autoshop and this is your mil now what are the controls that you have you can do the material planning for selected seos you can do material planning planning for selected oafs and you can do material planning for minimum inventory level items autoshop can be run at defined times so you could schedule the run of mrp now once you launch autoshop all the material planning as i explained to you is done automatically at the end of which for bought out items indents will be created for manufactured items work orders will be created and for subcontracted operations labor job indents will be created so essentially all this will be done by autoshop itself now once autoshop is run you could also get to see the autoshop log because these, all these things would have been done obviously by the system in the background so you could select the date and time for which autoshop was run and with which selections was this done is also shown to you and what all activities took place is shown to you so whether the allocation of material was done whether allocation of material was done whether work orders were done whether indents were done whether oaf allocation was done so everything is available in autoshop log and which warehouses were selected whether there were any errors etc are all available in autoshop log now for the manufactured items as i said work orders will be created for procured items indents will be created so now we go to the procurement cycle vendor master will be the first major master to be created on the procurement side same as in case with the customer we capture all the data related to the vendor so all vendor information will be available here and as i said on the vendor side that is your creditor side again you have the option of creating three accounts so money that you pay in advance to the vendors the creditors is shown on the asset side and then on the liability side you could have the creditor account and retention account for item which you are buying from the vendor there is an item vendor relationship file that you create so item vendor relationship file will relate or link items to a particular vendor and the rates at which these items are bought obviously the currency the rate discount and 
what is the landed price is calculated by the system based on the rate structure add and edit is a controlled facility here delivery day is defined and stamped with the user who created this record and the last update date you could deactivate the relationship which means that from this vendor you do not want to buy this item you could also deactivate vendor entirely that you do not want to buy anything from this vendor for the time being so item vendor relationship is a very crucial file as i said this is the control file which can uh, be made more effective if you say rate and discounts cannot be changed at the time of making of the purchase orders so based on the item vendor relationship file indent to purchase order is created it's a conversion process so you create purchase orders out of the indents which are generated by the system all those items which are default items for this vendor will be shown to you you select those items which you want to in this purchase order as this is a job based procurement functionality you can also pick and choose between the jobs that you want to actually order for so you can select any sjo or any uf based on which the items will be brought into the purchase order purchase orders are cons considered to be sacrosanct in new horizon because every valuation inventory valuation and costing is done through purchase order rates so pos are made and then they have to be authorized once authorization is done no editing can be done and any change to the purchase order thereafter has to be brought in through purchase order amendment there are other purchase functionalities as well which are short closing of the purchase order cancellation of the purchase order uh, if nothing has been received against a purchase order you can cancel it if partially deliveries have been received you can short close them as we have the material purchase cycle we also have the service purchase cycle you have three kind of purchasing in new horizon you have material purchase you have service purchase and you have subcontracted item purchase which is your labor kind of purchases so services can be purchased through service purchase orders similarly there is a labor kind of relationship which is in subcontracting so you can create a relationship file uh, you this is a subcontracting module and purchasing for the subcontracting can be done from item vendor labor which is a part of purchase module so same as you do for your material you have the functionality to set up relationship file for jobs that you get done outside so here you have the per item per uh, process code rate and this could be defined for a period or for quantities with the applicable taxes so three kind of purchase is possible material labor and service going forward once purchase orders are placed then inventory would kick in material will start coming in inventory can be classified or stored in multiple warehouses this may be physical or logical warehouses so when you are creating a new warehouse system will prompt you first of all for which site and here you have predefined in warehouse types so you have a physical warehouse you have site warehouse you have scrap warehouse customer supplied capital receiving rejection kanban and process so select the kind of warehouse that you are creating customer supplied warehouse is a warehouse where material coming from customers is stored so it has no inventory value for you it is for quantity tracking so and there are controls like hide inventory of warehouse from mrp you may decide that this is a warehouse where i want to keep my spares and this should not get into my actual material planning cycle so you can hide that warehouse from your uh, mrp it is your auto shop and consider for valuation whether at the time of preparation of the stock valuation report should this warehouse be considered so this is the major requirement definition of warehouse then you can start off with gate inward you can configure 
in the policy whether gate inward is required or not required goods receipt notes are made against purchase orders so once you select a vendor all the pending purchase orders of that vendor are shown to you you select the po against which the material is being received and then all the items which are received are shown to you which are pending are shown to you items which are received you have to enter the quantities here it can allow you to enter only so much of quantity which is pending you also enter the delivery challenge quantity once and here in time we capture a lot of other data as well which is related to the documents which would have come with the grn and you can do the attachment of documents as well once a grn is done if you have set up the system such that authorization is required then you can authorize the grn as i was showing to you earlier pending for authorization this three uh grns are required to be authorized i would say authorized and this grn would be authorized but before this if you want to make any change to the grn you can after the grn is authorized no change is possible once grns are authorized postings take place in the stock ledger and also in the books of account so what happens is that your cardex will start showing this material as received your books of account will get posted where the control account of grn liability will be posted material account material that has come in gl account related to those material classes will be posted and tax postable taxes will be posted so grn does a lot of things and if the material has come for a specific job it gets allocated to the job at the time of grn if grn has items which uh, require qc then material will be shown to the people in qc as pending so there is a qc module which i'll touch upon later once material is received and allocated issue to shop floor transaction takes place allocation again done by auto shop can be done by users also there are functionalities for automatic allocation is functionality for manual allocation also issue to shop floor is again an automated process where allocated material is brought into the issue slip you can make the issue slip either work order wise or seo wise or sales oif wise items to be issued are shown with issue quantity possible for which work order and for which job so uh, we recommend the practice that whatever material is required to be issued is pulled by the production team they will select the job for which they want to work all those items which are allocated will come into the issue slip and the stores will pick the material from store and authorize this and automatically posting will be done here again integration will kick in so when the material was received material class account will would have been posted when so it's necessarily in the warehouse when it is issued wip will be debited and the material account will be credited so simultaneously value will move on the books as well once material is issued to a work order production booking will be done against the work order so labor production entry will be done here you would select uh, the shop for which the booking is being done uh, the job against which the booking is being done so you have the option of booking either a normal kind of uh, uh, manufacturing or a river kind of manufacturing then you have the employee for which the time is going to be booked the date on which the production was done and then you have the job if you select the job it shows you the work orders related to the job only if you select a work order it will show you only a particular work order against which the time has to be booked so labor production entry is done once labor production booking is done then the work order receipt at the end of the process when all the operations are booked because there could be a sequence of operation which we would have defined in the process sheet uh, on the engineering side there could be a sequence here uh, which is in the process sheet which would have been inherited in a work order so process sheet carry information about the sequence of operation and the work centers on which these operations have to be done whether this is an inside operation or an outside operation all inside operations will be uh, uh, will be 
or will have to be done on our shop floor all outside operations will be given to the subcontractors so when you when system auto shop or manually generate work orders this information of processes are carried into them so if i uh, have a work order round routing printed it gives me all these details like i select uh, a work order randomly any work order it shows me three things one is what are the items required to manufacture this work order and what are the operations required so this is my sequence of operation this is the work order number and related details what is the start date and what is the due date and then you have the operation sequence and then you have the required items details this would come from the bill of material this would come from the process sheet so work orders are key documents against which production booking is done when finally production is done stores will receive the material back in their hands so as grns are made against purchase orders work order receipts are made against uh, work orders work order receipt is a document i'll randomly show you one this is the proof of receipt of finished material in back in the warehouse so this is my work order receipt so work order receipt is coming back of the finished product in the warehouse 49 quantities this is this work order status is closed for this job this is the work order receipt number these items were consumed this is the value of the consumption this is my material value and i have not marked any shop floor addition here so this is my total child value of material at this rate the parent item would have come into the stock ledger so once work top level work order for the finished item is done material is available for dispatch so you have the dispatch cycle sales allocation is a process through which you allocate material for sending out again it's a reservation it's a process which is reversible you allocate the material against the job order uh, sorry or order acknowledgement form items which are pending to be dispatched are shown to you and then once this allocation is done dispatch would be possible there, there are two dispatch documents one is delivery note and the other is invoice you can allocate maximum to the extent of customer order quantity and to the extent available in stock so allocation is done based on which the delivery chalan and invoice are done which is a part of our dispatch cycle so delivery chalan is done delivery chalan again has a um, finance posting effect uh, i would also uh, would want to rewind slightly work order receipt would also have a finance impact finished goods that came back into stock account related to the material would be posted and that would be debited and wip would be credited so here delivery chalan is made delivery chalan would remove inventory from stock from finished goods and take it into i mean send it out of the company Uh, on the books of account there is a control account called dc asset account which will get posted and uh, your finished goods account will be credited the class link the ledger account linked to the class of material will be credited when invoice is made the posting will be done in the books of account multiple postings will be done here sales will be credited invoices are made based on the order acknowledgement forms one cannot change the rate in the invoice the rate in the order acknowledgement form is considered as final when invoices are made sales account is rt account is debited naturally sales account is credited and postable taxes are credited but other than that 
we also debit the cost of, cost of goods sold so material that has been now invoiced your cogs will be debited and value that was lying in dc asset account will be credited so invoice generates this multiple financial entries and all these would go into the books of account and invoice will close the cycle that started off with the customer order now uh, as it is we had planned till one o'clock uh, what i have not been able to touch upon is the subcontracting cycle which i'll do quickly in next five minutes for everybody to get a feel of it and then i'll start taking questions subcontracting cycle can be triggered both from the stock as well as from the shop floor labor job gate pass is a key document through which material is sent out to the subcontractor gate pass again creates transactions on stock ledger as well as in the books of account we have a control account called third party account as soon as a gate pass is authorized value of the material that has been sent out to the subcontractor is debited to third party wip and credited in your either in your warehouse or in your wip from wherever the material is gone you can send material to the subcontractor which is the raw material required for him to work on this could as i said happen from stock or or from the shop floor another document required is labor job indent now indents as i said are created by auto shop but you could also manually create indents if required a labor indent is a document that indicates to the subcontractor what is it that he has to manufacture because he would have received the raw material which is used in multiple different parent items so one has to tell him what exactly has to be made so indent is a document which gives him to important pieces of information what has to be made and when is the delivery expected so you can uh, auto shop would have known this if it was a part of your shop floor activity and it would have created a labor indent if you want to send out something from stock you have to create a manual indent and this is where the details are given that this is my indent number this is the party to whom i am sending this and this is the item this is the quantity and this is the delivery date so indents another key document apart from the gate pass and then the third important document is rate contract that i mentioned once the material is manufactured by the subcontractor and given back to you a grn is made just as we have a grn against the purchase order this is a grn against labor job order there is a receipt of parent item back in stock once the material is received back it goes for qc qc is a very detailed module here you have I, i'll right now touch upon the subcontractors qc because that is where we are right now so uh, material that is coming back from a subcontractor can also or would also pass through the cycle of qc this quality check called qc entry would have multiple possibilities one is either i accept the material or send it back for rework or create a rejection rejection if created could have a cause attached to it whether it was due to subcontractor's fault or whether it was due to the material quality of material so you enter all those details here in terms of quantities so if it is rework another gate pass is made and material sent back if it is a rejection material is retained because it was our material but if it is due to material the vendor rejection note will have to be made for that item if it was due to subcontractor a debit note may have to be made for the subcontractor so this is what happens during the qc if it passes qc material comes back either in stock or goes to the shop floor and qc as i said 
is a module which supports doing the quality check from multiple sources incoming material against grn two types of qc possible one is accept reject kind of qc everything that is pending for qc is shown here you can accept or reject quantities that is the simplest kind of qc another kind of qc is that you can define the parameters the qc plan which will uh, help you to measure every parameter and record it against the uh, standard values this is for the incoming material so you have uh, the uh, grns and then you enter it shows you all the PO related details and you enter the quantities both in purchase unit of measurement as well as internal unit of measurement for accepted and rejected quantities. Similarly, there is in process QC. In the process sheet, after every operation, you can define whether you require QC. So when you define the process sheet for every operation, there is this control where you say QC is yes. So even after production booking is done, material is shown as pending for QC, only after QC is cleared. Here you get to see this flag called QC required. If it is set up as yes, material is given to internal QC. And only after it is cleared, it goes to the next operation. So you have incoming material QC, you have subcontracted QC, you have in-process QC. And then other transactions are if material is rejected you go to the vendor rejection note to send that material back out based on that a debit note is created all these have direct links to mrp so whenever there is a rejection recorded on the shop floor or in the incoming material mrp is updated suitably if there is a return of material due to change of priorities mrp is updated suitably so all this is very tightly integrated finance we have a fully integrated financial accounting system. Starts with the definition of chart of accounts, which can be inherited from your existing accounting system like Tally. And if somebody wants to integrate Tally, it can be synchronized with Tally. But we cover everything. Uh, so your bill passing will be done here based on the uh, GRNs that you have made in the system. So for all your purchases, whether material purchase, labor purchase, or service purchase, your bill passing is done here in financial accounting system. Directly from this, your GST records will be updated. TDS, we have a whole uh, structure here. So the applicability of TDS at the vendor level, the categorization of TD different uh, uh, sections along with the applicable rates, etc., is defined here. So when you are doing service or subcontracted uh, material bill passing, TDS will be accounted for so you have the tds percentage here the section under which that tds has to be deducted and the limits etc so financial accounting system complies with the statutory needs of uh, gst as well as tds we give out the outputs in excel formats for offline uh, updation bill passing based on grn uh, so sales invoices are directly booked into the financial accounting system you can do uh, cost profit center breakup here at the time of entering the transaction. Bank transactions, again, are a unique kind of transactions in uh, IMM, uh, in uh, New Horizon because when you are paying out money, usually it's a simple, straightforward bank transaction. But in our case, what you could do is if you are making a payment to the vendor, you could, I would select a bank book, which do the checking of uh, check numbers also. You can define serial numbers. And then transaction for payment from bank. And then I have, uh, I, I would have to have the date, which is uh, Here I have to select the check number which I am issuing right now. I would say I want to give
<laughs> so i would say advance payment against bill payment or retention payment if i say advance payment i have to give the group i would say advance given to creditors here i am selecting the vendor this is so when i say advance given to creditor it gets booked into that asset kind of account instead of on the liability side of account it says account of asset so money would go into the asset account and not into his regular creditors account so we have such functionalities built in on the financial accounting side it gives all the final reports like trial balance balance sheet profit and loss payable receivable so fully functional financial accounting system integrated with other parts of erp uh, i have already overflown the time limit by nearly 15 minutes thank you very much all of you for being a part of this webinar now i am unmuting the microphones and i request you to uh, raise your hands for questions yes so microphones have now been unmuted uh, if you have questions i'll be happy to answer them यस विनय भाई बताइए गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड आफ्टरनून गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड आफ्टरनून टू यू सर या वी हैव स्टार्टेड इन द मॉर्निंग एंड इट्स नाउ आफ्टरनून इट्स ओके आई एम सॉरी आई टुक मोर टाइम देन प्लान नो 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 इट्स ओके द प्रोडक्ट इज सो डीप सो या वन एंड हाफ आवर आई थिंक इज वेरी लेस इन दैट केस uh anyway my question is uh whenever the notification is received regarding a purchase order or whatever the notification in our product hmm you said that we can delete them right yes after viewing it so is it possible that we can have a notification sorted as a unread and a read so that unread yes. can be seen regularly that's what you can have a uh, you can have uh, unread you can have set up the view it says view all but you could yeah. always have uh, the unread uh, notifications i'll go to the home screen we also have yeah. an indication we also have the indication see this indication shows that these yeah. are unread messages so they come sorted okay. and they here on this side you have only unread when you say okay. view all then you would have everything yeah. here okay okay that's that's so thank you for every everybody's uh, information today's session today's webinar is about giving a an overview we plan to have training sessions conducted uh, where we would go into the details of each module and each function so we will inform everybody about the schedule and then uh, you would be able to participate 
in the training sessions as well. Yes, Vinayak, you have a question? Uh, yes, yeah. sir. Uh, uh, are you able to provide this rec recorded webinar on the mail? Yes, we will be able to do that. Sure. Okay, thank you. Uh, please do that. Uh, Unmesh, bhai, one question I wanted to ask. Good afternoon. Yes, Rakesh, good afternoon. Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, I just wanted to understand, like, you know, a case of uh, a job, you know, which we give it to outside for, you know, job work. Yes. That uh, particular indent can be, uh, can we create the barcodized uh, number of the indent number? I mean, that, uh, what do you call, the uh, outward slip number? So that we when can. it comes back, can we just scan that and you know get it uh, very fast? Yes, definitely. Rakesh, we can have barcode stickers printed uh, with uh, the requisite details. At the document uh, level, it could be document number, vendor code, uh, date, yeah, etc. Yeah. So that can and be done. The, yes, at the item level, it could be item code related data okay. also. But it can be done. Yes. Okay. And uh, can we do the uh, sort of interfacing with the handle devices also yes of course See, I mean, your database scanner. is open so that we can yeah. we can organize uh, we can write a program on a handle device which can interact with the uh, database and can can give that good question rakesh as i i should have said uh -huh. this the new architecture that we have in new horizon is api based so we can expose uh -huh. the apis uh, so okay. you could directly access the data through apis so, okay, any so we can write an Android program uh, through your yes, APIs yes. and can yes, yes. Uh, access it's the data. Supposed to multiply, it's cross-platform. So you can, we have used .NET Core. So uh -huh. you can use any any OS to call our APIs. Okay, okay. Nice, nice. Thank you. Chirag, why you have a question? Chirag, why Saval check Ketan bhai. Mesa Ketan ki wala. Hello. Yes sir. Ketan bhai, good afternoon. Unmesh. Good afternoon, Unmesh. Uh, there were three words in integration with CAD, AutoCAD, Tally and PLM. Yes. What is PLM or what is PLM? What is PLM? Okay, PLM is product product life cycle management tool. It is a class of products. Like ERP okay, is a class of life. products. PL life cycle management tool. Management tool. Okay. Now, in one more word, what, what does it do? Yeah. What does it do? Uh, you may say that it is an ERP for engineering designs. Uh, as you know, there are different kinds of design tools available in the market. And a product mm -hmm. right from conceptualization stage gets on to one of these CAD tools or the actual design. The data related to which is all stored in the PLM tool. So you could be using multiple CAD tools, but this data will then be collated in the PLM, this product lifecycle management tool. It will keep the entire history from conceptualization to deactivation of the product. So PLMs are very useful in manufacturing setups. Okay, thank you. And one more word on, uh, in BOM, ECN entry. What is ECN entry? entry? engineering change note this is a terminology that we use yeah. it is not uh, uh, people in engineering manufacturing would recognize this but it is a document you can change the existing master bill of material so it is called engineering change note ecn okay. thank you and yeah. this is very much uh, good basic information and we require very deep uh, training on these all modules. We will get into the details of each module during the training for every function. Uh, Hello. Image by this ECNs are connected to the PLM? Yes. In fact, if you are using a PLM tool, then you will actually do the design change in PLM first. And that data mm -hmm. will flow into ERP. Okay. Okay. 
because you would have changed something in your drawing which will yeah, yeah. then be brought into the erp okay. thank you thank you you why hello 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 uh, mr hello. abdul here from hyderabad ah abdul bhai bolo uh, sir uh, can we uh, get the reports also related to taxation part like gst of uh, gst or tds which can yes. be uh, generally uploaded into the portals yes. yes yes we have the gst and tds reports which come out in standard upload templates which you can use to okay. upload in the government uh, portals okay okay yeah. thank you thank you यूज we have microsoft sql server as our backend database okay so front uh, end front end uh, please go ahead pucho uh, uh so uh, at the time of procuring the erp by customer uh, are they need to procure the sql licenses also uh, parallelly there are two possibilities one is that if the operations are such that the database size does not exceed exceed 10 gb then there is a version of sql server called sql server express which is a free addition from microsoft which can be used if okay. the customer has operations which are large then we recommend that a license may be bought but this decision is left to the customer okay okay milin bhai you have a question No, no, that was a good session. Okay. I would say, and uh, how uh, this type of webinars will continue, then we can get some more deep into the product. Definitely, we'll keep on doing that. We'll keep you informed in advance, and uh, we will get into the most granular level detail as we do in our trainings, so that you will get to know the product inside out, and you Because will be also able to speak as confidently as we do about the product. Yeah, yeah. We want to go in such deep. We come more. So as this is an initial stage for us. Yes. So if we go, we can uh, like uh, discuss with the customers uh, on the first meet type also. That how correct. we can correct, correct. The product. You you know the product inside out so that you can talk more confidently. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you, Vinod Bhai. Hello. Good afternoon, Umesh Bhai. How are you? All good. How are you? How are you? Unmesh bhai, first of all, uh, it was a new dimension to the presentation because uh, I have seen presentation through Rajesh bhai, and uh, this had added a new dimension to the product. So thanks for uh, this session. Most welcome, Unmesh uh, bhai. Uh, uh, second, uh, to, uh, please go ahead. Secondly, secondly. Uh, do we have any documentation would, which could bring uh, a light on what are the changes that have been made with respect to immms and uh, new horizon uh, i'll ask rohit to make a note of it uh, we would hmm. uh, definitely because there, one there might point. there may be some new, new functionalities which have been added into the system except for interface and uh, platform there might be some new facilities that you have added into the system so can we have that uh, release note sort of thing yes we will uh, we will get it done and send it across to everybody sure okay thank you sir definitely thank you vinod bhai you had a question hello ha uh, hello उमेश 
Uh, if if customer decides to go on a cloud and if his database is more still he need to buy a licenses in that case no sir in fact uh, when usually usually when you buy services on the cloud it consists yeah. of two things one is infrastructure the physical right. infrastructure which could be your virtual server with uh, cpus ram hard disk uh, transfer bandwidth consumption of data and so on and on the other side it is the operating system and support that you would need like uh, iis and uh, other licenses like sql server so when you okay. go to the cloud you pay one price per month for right. the entire set of infrastructure that you would need which would include both hardware as well as system software so you can oh. say that i want sql server for hmm. uh, let's say if you are uh, uh, a, a company where you need uh, 10 users then you would say i would have a 10 user license so uh, cloud service providers will give you this thank you thank you very much right right hello hello ha unmesh bhai ha we know here we know putkar from kya kam ha bolo bolo vinod bhai Good afternoon. Ah, no, uh, as I said, like so the, the session is definitely really useful. My question is, uh, like, you know, uh, we talked about the product features yesterday. Will there be any, uh, any session which will be on the sales front? Rather, because my question is, uh, we in during the presentation, you have given the comparison with SAP, right? Yes. Uh, but there are, uh, today, I think the... Uh, SAP may not be our today is a major competitor. We are fighting against the maybe Microsoft or TCS or maybe some local software vendors. Okay. So how do we fight uh, or how do we position our product against this, you know, the, the competitive product? So will there be any, any session we are planning to conduct? This is an idea that you have given to us today. Uh, definitely yeah. we would plan one. It would be yeah. a very nice session to have. Because then yeah. we will be <clears throat> synchronizing ourselves internally to position yeah. our product in the market with the same kind of pitch. So yes, we'll plan one session entirely for sales only, not related yeah. to uh, uh, the details of the product, but more about yeah. how to position our product in the market and how to counter questions against the competition. Yeah, and we also, I think, uh, since the product Okay, anyway, anyway, it's a good because we have getting, been, you know, we are positioning for the last couple of months and getting good response. But my uh, observation is like, we need to create the, some brand awareness of the product as well. Correct. So, so any, uh, any such marketing, uh, you know, branding uh, also, I think it is uh, required uh, so that, you know, people will come to know about our product and features about it. So maybe you can think on this, right? Sure, we will. Thank you very much for this idea. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot. Yep. Any more questions? Okay, then. Thank you very much. All of you for participating and spending so much of your valuable time with us today. Uh, we will inform you about the detailed training, training sessions which could start as early as this week. We'll let you know in advance about the schedule. Please register and uh, together we'll make sure that we become the product of choice for manufacturing companies in India as far as ERPs are concerned. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you very much.